Now I've got uh, coming up on 6.05, and Sam, I was just waiting for Sammy. Now that Sammy's here, we'll go ahead and get started. It's, it's not a party without Sammy. Topic tonight is uh, plain English, and, uh, and this is a tool you can use to help learn and improve ATC communications. Um, So everybody wants to talk like a pro on the radio, myself included, and uh, not everybody is able to do that, myself included. And a lot of people are intimidated, particularly uh, less experienced pilots that are trained at Wings of Carolina where uh, it's an uncontrolled field. We have fairly simple uh, uh, radio communications procedures and then you get into a high a tempo area like Raleigh back when Raleigh was high tempo and uh, and things really get uh, intimidating to some folks uh, and I think uh, no matter how experienced you are we all we all want to do this well and we want to do it uh, as well as we can and do it better and better so how do you do that you know the old joke is how do you get to Carnegie Hall and and so practice 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 uh, I think uh, those of us on the call here recognize that uh, ATC communications, the more you do it, the easier it gets because for the most part, there is a pattern of communications that are repeated over and over again, and you learn the patterns. So you're, you're flying into Raleigh, you contact approach, you have the ATIS, and you know what they're going to say next. Therefore, when they say that, uh, your brain has to do less work in figuring out what it is that they said. And so that all of that process, I was I was looking at something in this material, and it's it says it's the it's the equivalent of muscle memory for your brain on ATC communications. You're used to patterns; uh, those patterns are repeated, and once you get the hang of the patterns, it makes life a lot easier. So, how do you get the hang of the patterns? You practice, 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 um, and so. $120 an hour plus uh, in our airplanes as a practice vehicle to talk to air traffic control is a pretty expensive way to do that. I think we all recognize that. And so understanding this, I've always thought surely there's got to be a better way to do this. And, and a lot of folks suggest things like uh, listening to live ATC. And that's really good. And you can listen to real ATC communications, but you are a passive and you're not participating and it's not the same thing. Uh, and therefore the learning experience is not the same thing. And I've always thought, gee, uh, what surely some smart person can make some kind of computer program and you can speak to it and it's smart enough to know uh, what you're trying to say. And then it can give you a response like a, a, a controller would respond. So surely those things exist. And I just could not find such a thing until I saw this article, I think it was AOPA, where it said the Air Force is providing a million dollars to Purdue University aviation graduates for an app to help develop a critical communication skills suite that advanced pilot safety. And I go, hmm, well, if the Air Force is shelling out a million bucks to these guys, there must be something to this. And so I started looking into it. Now, before I continue down that path, I have a trivial trivia question for you. Uh, Purdue University, that kind of rings a bell. Uh, they have an aviation history and they have a very distinguished graduate uh, in the field of aviation from Purdue. Who knows who that is? Michael, do you know this? I have no idea. That guy. Now, the reason I know this is because uh, Hal Bowman's a good friend of mine, and he's a Purdue graduate, so he always reminds me about the famous people that went to his uh, alma mater. But uh, my, my hero, Neil Armstrong, is a graduate of Purdue. So that's the trivia for today. So what is plain English? Uh, it's an app-based radio simulator. Uh, it, just like I had thought somebody could do this, it uses speech analysis to analyze what you say and then based on that gives you feedback and gives you responses. Uh, it includes a large database of airports and scenarios and uh, it's app based, but it's available for iOS. So Apple guys can use it and Android as well. So, uh, so pretty broad base. 
So as a segue to those, how do you get that? Well, you go to Google Play or you go to the App Store. So Android or iOS, you go out there and download it. It's not free, uh, and I'll talk about uh, how much this costs when we get to, to the end of this discussion. But uh, that's where you go to get it. And, and it's about as easy as you can uh, possibly, you know, to access it and download is about as easy as it can be. And without any more ado, let's do a demo. And I'll see if I can use my Zoom skills and share some other screens here. All right, and hopefully you see that. That's my iPad screen. Uh, they offer lessons and scenarios based on VFR, IFR. Uh, then there's a flight scenario. We'll take a look at that. And then there's some settings. And um, so we'll, we will dabble in uh, all of these. Now, what I'm doing here, it's, it isn't necessarily obvious, but I'll use my mouse pointer to point out things on this screen. And then I'm actually going over to the iPad to manipulate the uh, the, the uh, selections off the screen. On the bottom right-hand corner is the settings. Let's just take a quick look at that. Uh, account information, subscription, uh, institution. Uh, you can have this generate random call signs. And I selected one of my familiar call signs for 72675. They have a number of airports. Uh, in their database, and in this case, I selected random. When I search your database, sadly, they don't have any North Carolina airports, so uh, Charlotte or Raleigh or Greensboro are not in there, but there are a couple of South Carolina airports. I'll use those. Uh, you can tweak the ATC voice that you're uh, listening to. I like Samantha. Uh, down here where it says the speech recognition, intermediate, see what the choices are there. This doesn't affect the way that you interact with the tool, but it affects the way that you're analyzed and graded. So uh, it's harder if it assumes that you're a native English speaker. So I'll, I'll go easy on myself and I'll leave it at intermediate English proficiency. It doesn't affect the way it behaves. Uh, Feedback is, is stuff to them, reset tutorials, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it keeps track of your lesson history as you go through these things. And then you can reset that if you want to. So that's basically what we have in the settings. Now let's go to our first scenario. And the basics, I'll just show you what this says. Uh, and I think for a primary student that hadn't heard any of this, uh, uh, this is useful for a primary student. I certainly would recommend a primary student go through all of this. Uh, it's a little boring for me uh, getting a lesson on how you pronounce digits and numbers, et cetera, but it's fundamental. It's its own thing, as we know in ATC communication. So, uh, so that's useful for, uh, for entry level folks. I'll start out with the taxi out. And you've got a number of lessons, not necessarily an increasing difficulty, but different scenarios. So we'll start out, uh, I'll start out with requests and simple instructions. And typical scenarios. So you're at an airport. Uh, at the top, we've got I'm Skyhawk 72675. Uh, we've got ADIS Bravo. We're at a, an area called Ramp and we want to contact Hillsborough Ground and request a taxi. So on the screen here, uh, you've got this ATC I, and basically that repeats. If ATC has said something to you, you can get a repeat on that, and it also will spell it out. Uh, this uh, question mark, I'll just pop this up. I'm not going to use this a lot tonight, but it's fairly elaborate help screen. It tells you exactly what prompt are, what the prompt is, what the program thinks your expected response is, 
And then you can also record your response and listen to your own response, which is, which is useful. I kind of don't like to see that much information because I get more out of it if I have to think about it. Uh, so down at the bottom, uh, you've got the scenario, you're at the ramp. Uh, this arrow here, uh, when we're ready to move on to the next screen, this will alternate between blue and red. And right now I have a flashing red on the response eye and a flashing blue and red on the microphone. So what I do at this point is I touch that microphone, it starts recording my voice, and then when I'm done, I touch the microphone again and it gives me an assessment of what I said. So let's see, let's see how well I did. I remember Ronnie Moss, uh, when he was discussing these things with me, one of his favorite jokes was PTT does not mean push to think, it means push to talk. So think about what you're gonna say before you push that button. So I'll think about it a little bit. Hopefully you heard a chime there. Hillsborough Grounds, Gawk 72675 at the ramp, ready to taxi with information bravo. And you see down at the bottom, I actually got a pretty good score because I'm up in the green here. And then if I press on this show feedback, it'll show me what it got. So it, it's, it's just looking for keywords based on what I said. And I said all the magic words. I thought I said seven, but uh, uh, maybe it didn't understand my North Carolina accent. And I got everything else. So I'm okay with that. And then the next thing, since I've got my assessment, I see that this arrow here is flashing blue and red. So that means I can press that and something else is gonna to happen to advance the scenario. So I'll try that. And you're gonna get a response from ATC. So like a good pilot, I'm gonna have a, uh, a writing utensil so I can write down what the heck it is that they tell me. Skyhawk 72675, Hillsboro Ground, taxi to runway 2, via ramp. And I'll see if I can get that right. Skyhawk 72675, taxi runway 2, via ramp. It wasn't real happy, happy with that. Yeah, I got most of that. And we'll advance next. And it shows me my score. Simple scenario, uh, graded me on accuracy, did okay. Uh, I was talking kind of slow, so it didn't like the rate. Uh, pause of 84%. I wasn't pausing too much. That was good. And I wasn't verbose. So uh, I'm okay with that score. Let's go to, let's try lesson two. Do I have any volunteers that want to try this? Todd, I bet you want to try this. <laughs> and what we'll do is, okay, scenario here is uh, uh, Bakers, we're contact Bakersfield ground. We're at the ramp ready to taxi VFR and we got information Victor. So we'll use some words to that effect. And if Todd, you want to have a go at this, when, I, when you are ready, I will press the uh, record button. Whoops, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, give me a little more volume if you can. Mm, not sure how to do that. Okay. Is that all you well, got? I mean, is good enough? Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Just talk, okay. talk kind of loud and clear into the mic. And because of the way I've got this uh, uh, audio routed into my iPad, there's going to be extra errors in here, but we'll, we'll see how you do. So let me know when you're ready. Uh, okay, I'll give it a try. Go All ahead. right, here we go. All right. Uh, Bakersfield Ground, Skyhawk 72675, ready to taxi for VFR departure. 
Not bad. You're in the green. Let's see what the feedback looks like. Oh, I forgot to tell it info victor. Yep. There you didn't go. have info info victor and you didn't say your location, which was the ramp. Ah, good point. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I want to push the uh, the next button here. Todd, why don't you get ready to copy and see what they say? You ready? All right. Yep. Skyhawk 72675, Bakersfield Ground, taxi to runway tree zero left, via Alpha Niner, Alpha, Bravo, cross runway tree zero right. Did you get all that? I think so. Three zero. So yeah, uh, I guess uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I so guess. let me know when you're ready for the read back. Okay, here we go. All right, let's go. Uh, Skyhawk seven two six seven five taxi runway three zero left via Alpha nine Alpha Bravo cross runway three zero right. Oh. That's good. Let's see if I can get the feedback there. All yeah. right. Yeah, I just didn't like my accent either. Okay. I think you got that all right. And we'll advance to the next now. Let's see what else she says. And that's done. So Todd got a pretty good score on that one. Now let's go to the IFR lessons and take a look at some of those. Request clearance. Uh, simple clearance as filed. Who's interested in trying that? Anybody want to try that? Come on, Joe, you can do this. Yeah, if you want me to. All right, so let's pull up the scenario here. So your transient ramp contact Randolph clearance delivery for IFR to Bloomington. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Bloomington clearance, Skylock 72675, request IFR to Bloomington. And I guess it was, uh, was that not loud enough? I know it was Randolph, I misread that. Well, let, let's see, you know, it, it, your audio might, uh, so you got clearance delivery, you got all that, this just might be your audio not coming in well enough for whatever reason. Okay. And the only thing that I, that I noticed was uh, the ATIS information wasn't there. Okay, yeah, I didn't see where that was. Yeah, that, that. yeah that's at the top. Oh, I see that up there now. Julia, okay. And it's the same for all of these scenarios. Gotcha. All right, let's see what happens next. Well, next you're going to get the clearance. Are you ready to copy? Oh, uh, yeah, ready to copy. All right. Skyhawk 72675, clear to Bloomington as filed. Maintain 4000, expect 8010 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 127.1, squat 5464. Got all that? Yep. All right. You ready to read back? Yep. Here we go. And Skyhawk 72675, cleared to Bloomington as filed. Climb maintain 4,000. Expect 8,010 minutes. One Departure is 127.1, squawk 5464. Yeah, so that was, that was pretty good, Joe. I don't know why the feedback is something with our audio coming from you but that's all right and let's see what else we got here skyhawk 72675 read back correct contact ground on 119.6 when ready to taxi ready to read back yep Ground on 119.6, uh, when ready to taxi, Skyhawk 72675. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and, and uh, if you're actually speaking into the tablet uh, microphone or the uh, the iPad, you'll get better accuracy than this. And there are the results. We'll look at another IFR scenario here. Let's see. Let's try this one. Request full procedure ILS vectors. Who wants to try this one? Steve, you want to try this? I'll give it a shot. All right. So we've got uh, Denver approach that we're contacting. And I think the initial contact is probably be something like contact them with your altitude and just say you have request. Yeah. You want to try that? All right, 12,000. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Denver approach, Skyhawk 72675 at 12,000. Sorry, 12,000 uh, with request. Yeah, that's pretty good. And instead of 12,000, uh, they would like for you to say 1, 2,000. One, yeah, 1, 2,000, yeah. Okay. Now, this is, this is an example of, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sloppy about that, 1, 2,000 or 10,000 or whatever, and the real-world controllers don't care. But if you're trying to, do it right. The tool is showing you how to, how it's uh, supposed to be done according to the book. And that's good to, to fly, know. I'm used to flying in the low numbers. Yeah. yeah well, that's true. Yeah. Same <laughs> here. All right. Let's see what uh, happens now in the next. You ready? Yeah. Skyhawk 72675, Denver approach. Say request. Let's see, our request is going to be, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to push the next arrow here. Yep. So the scenario is request uh, ILS runway 26 approach full procedure. Yep. You ready for that? All set, yep. Here we go. Uh, Skyhawk 72675 request full procedure ILS runway 26 approach with information Bravo. That's pretty good. Uh, left. Okay. Five. Yeah. yeah, it's 26 left. Okay. Let's uh, now get ready to copy. She's going to tell you something here if you're ready. Yep, all set. Skyhawk 72675, fly heading 135 at or above 5,000. When able, direct Chuck X. Oh, no, I, I didn't get that. Sorry. <laughs> well, so I'm going to play one. So here's what the beauty of this. We can have them repeat it. So if I push the blue ATC I. Skyhawk 72675, fly heading 135 at or above 5,000. When able, direct Juck X. Juck X. Okay, I think I've got it. All right, here we go. Uh, Skyhawk 72675, um, fly heading 135 uh, at or above 5,000. And when able, direct Juvex. 72675. That looks good. Let's see what she says next. It says, uh, next, inform Denver approach your direct JUCAX. Ready for that? Yep, all set. Skyhawk 
Skyhawk72675, I am direct Jukex. Let's see. Leave some up. Yeah. Okay. Them, approach. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the actual numbers, I think that's just the audio. So we'll get the response there. Skyhawk 72675, cleared ILS runway 26 left approach. Cancel IFR this frequency or ground. Contact Pueblo Tower 119.1. Got that one? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. All right, here we go. Uh, Denver, Skyhawk 72675, cleared uh, 26 left. Cancel on this frequency on the ground. Contact tower 119.1. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think you pretty much got all of that. Let's see what the next response is. Nothing into that scenario. So the, the rate, do you think that's, they want it to be a little bit slower, just kind of a regular cadence instead of a faster? Yeah, I, I think what they want is they want a regular cadence and they don't want it too fast or too slow. Mm -hmm. Um. So really probably on that, you know, rate of 54% is probably not bad. It does seem like Samantha here speaks pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. And on some of these, you know, and I'm not going to go through all these scenarios. It's kind of more of the same, but, uh, Cruise clearance, uh, cancel IFR, initial contact. Ooh, I will, I will go over one thing that would be interesting to primary students. And we'll go back to VFR. Let's see here. Yeah, and let's uh, let's listen to one of these uh, flight following requests. And I'll start this. Chicago Center, Scout five three seven two six seven five with request. Skyhawk seven two six seven five, Chicago Center, state request. And it says report position. So do you just make up what your position is? No, it's the, 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 the position is depicted, should be depicted on the, the chart. Let me, uh, let me just start this one over again. Minneapolis, Minneapolis Center, Skalk 72675 with request. Skyhawk 72675, Minneapolis Center, state request. Yeah, I don't see the position marked on there. And I might, I might just have some issue now with the way this uh, iPad and Zoom is working. And Charlie Alpha Echo, so... And Skyhawk 72675 is 15 miles north of Bismarck, 2000. Request flight following Kilo Charlie Alpha Echo. Yeah. Skyhawk 72675, squat 2654 and ident. 2654 and IDENT 72675. 
Skyhawk 72675, Minneapolis Center, radar contact, 1 1 miles northeast of Bismarck, altitude indicating 2000 feet, current altimeter tree 018. Yeah, I kind of messed that one up. Altitude and position check, 3018-72675. Okay. So that's flight following. So let's go... Let's try the next one, report position and flight falling. Oh, there we go. Okay, who wants to try this one? Any takers? I'll give it a try. Okay, here we go. Let me know when you're ready. And I, they're gonna tell me what my request is later. <laughs> Cool. Uh, you know, basically what you're going to be requesting flight following. So you give this position and then you'll give your position. Then you say request and then they'll ask you to request and you request flight following. I think that's the way this is going to go. Make sense. Oh. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Here we go. Oakland center Skyhawk seven, two, six, seven, five, nine miles Southwest of Stockton with request. I thought that was pretty good. Niner miles. Mm. Uh, you didn't give the altitude. I think it was the only thing missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Skyhawk 72675, Oakland Center, state request. And your request is flight following the Sierra Mike X-ray. Okay. Skyhawk 72675 request flight following to Sierra Mike X-ray with information November. Yeah, I, I think you got most of that. So that was just a audio issue there. It's interesting that they want the kilo. I think yeah, you know, real world controllers, like for example, if anybody's um, you know listened to like the opposing bases uh, podcast, they definitely don't want the kilo, which is interesting. Okay. Yeah, their uh, their keypads are Spock one five seven five and ident. You want to play that again? Skyhawk 72675, Squawk 1575 and Ident. Okay. Are you ready? Squawk 1575 and Ident 72675. That's a good one. Skyhawk 72675, Oakland Center, radar contact, Niner miles southwest of Stockton, altitude indicating 2,500 feet, Oakland altimeter 2980. Okay. Okay, you ready for this one? Yes. Altitude and position check, altimeter 29080-72675. Yep, yeah, I think you got all that. Okay. And then let's see, I think terminate flight following is straightforward. Jacksonville Center, Scout 72675 with request. Skyhawk 72675, Jacksonville Center, state request. Skyhawk 72675 has Kilo November Papa Alpha in sight. Request terminate flight following. Ooh. Okay. I 
Pronunciation was not good, I guess. Skyhawk 72675, Jacksonville Center, frequency change approved, Squawk VFR. Frequency change approved, Squawk VFR, Skyhawk 72675. And that one was good. Okay. So that's a useful little scenario. The last thing that I want to show you is uh, the actual flight. And I've got uh, set up the departure point is Myrtle Beach flying to Columbia. And the flight scenarios are only VFR. So we'll just kind of play this. Who wants to do this? Okay, Joe, you're up. Picking on me twice? I know. <laughs> so I'll go start. Cargo ramp. Leaving okay. Myrtle Beach. You ready? Yes, sir. Myrtle Beach ground, Skyhawk. Hang on, hang on. Try again. Try, try again. Hey, Myrtle Beach ground, Skyhawk 72675 at the cargo ramp, ready to taxi or VFR with Romeo. And that's good. Skyhawk 72675, Myrtle Beach ground, taxi to runway 18 via Alpha, Alpha 7. Ready? Yes, sir. Taxi to runway 18 via Alpha, Alpha 7, Skyhawk 72675. Perfect. You're at runway 18. Let me know when you're ready. Yep, ready. Myrtle Beach Tower, Skyhawk 72675 at runway 18, uh, ready for takeoff southbound. That's good. Skyhawk 72675, Myrtle Beach Tower, hold short runway 18, landing traffic on short final. Hold short runway 18, Skyhawk 72675. Yep. Skyhawk 72675, make right traffic for south departure, runway 18, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 18, right traffic for south departure, Skyhawk 72675. Nice. Uh, next, we're going to contact Anderson Radio. You ready? Uh, is this a... Uh, this is going to be for this... flight following. Okay, all right. You ready? Anderson Radio, Skyhawk 72675, transmitting and receiving on 123.6. Nice. Skyhawk 72675, Anderson Radio, state request. And you want to activate a flight plan. Okay. Ready? Anderson Radio, Skyhawk 72675, 12 miles to the south of Myrtle Beach, like to activate VFR flight plan. Good. Skyhawk 72675, Anderson Radio, report position. Okay. Okay. Skyhawk 72675, currently 12 miles south of Myrtle Beach International. 5500. Oh, I'm 5,500 feet. Yeah. Let's see what the feedback was. I see that in the upper right-hand yeah. corner now. Yeah. Okay. Skyhawk 72675, Anderson Radio. Flight plan has been activated. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not even going to see what they wanted to see for that. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. <laughs>
Contact Jacksonville Center to make a request. All right. Jacksonville Center, Skyhawk 72675. And with request. All right. Skyhawk 72675, Jacksonville Center, state request. I'm ready. You ready? Yes, sir. And uh, Center Skyhawk 72675, currently 12 miles south of Myrtle Beach International, 2,000 feet, like uh, VFR flight falling to Columbia, Charlie Alpha Echo. That's good. Skyhawk 72675, Squawk 1241 and Titan. Squawk 1241 and Ident, Skyhawk 72675. Perfect. Skyhawk 72675, like huh? Jacksonville Center, radar contact, 12 miles south of Myrtle Beach, altitude indicating 2,000 feet, current altimeter 2 niner niner niner. Squawk 12241 and And Jacksonville Center position altitude checks uh, altimeter two niner 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 Skyhawk seven two six seven five. That's good. Other request. Jacksonville Center Skyhawk seven two six seven five with request. Skyhawk 72675, Jacksonville Center, state request. Ready? Yep. And Skyhawk 72675, we have Columbia in sight. Like to go ahead and terminate flight following. I didn't like that. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I just it, said. It, yeah, it wanted yeah. Kilo Charlie Alpha Echo. Rest of it's good. That's not real world. Okay. Skyhawk 72675, Jacksonville Center. Frequency change approved. Squawk VFR. Squawk VFR, frequency change approved. Skyhawk 72675. Yeah, I must have messed, messed that up. Okay. And now contact Columbia Approach. Columbia Approach, Skyhawk 72675, six miles to the west, 4,500 information, Zulu. Request entry into class, Charlie. Uh, you got that one. Let's see what they wanted. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting to request interest, entrance into class, Charlie. I wouldn't think that would be necessary. But. Hey, usually I just say inbound. Squawk 72675, yeah. Columbia Approach, Squawk 4712, and Ident. Squawk 4712, and Ident, Skyhawk 72675. Perfect. Skyhawk 72675, radar contact, altitude indicating 4,500, clear to class Charlie, state your intentions. Ready? Ready? Columbia Approach, Skyhawk 72675, position altitude checks. Uh, we're inbound for touch and goes at Columbia Metro, information Zulu. Yeah, that's good. Skyhawk 72675, report one two miles west of Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, let's try that again. Oh, sorry, I didn't know what the... Let's see, listen, respond. Oh, I think it's just wanting me to say one, two miles west of Columbia. Skyhawk 72675, report one, two miles west of Columbia. Hmm. Let's try that. And Skyhawk 72675 will report one, two miles west of Columbia. Close enough. Contact Columbia Tower, report position inbound for full stop. Columbia Tower, Skyhawk 72675, 12 miles west inbound for full stop uh, with Alpha. With alpha. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, cu I cut you off, but you got that uh, in there. Skyhawk 72675, Columbia Tower, report right midfield runway 2 tree. And we'll report uh, right. I, I missed what it said, actually. Sorry. I right midfield that. runway 23. And we'll report midfield runway 23, Skyhawk 72675. Between us, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> Contact Columbia Tower, report your position. So that's going to be right midfield 23. Columbia Tower, Skyhawk 72675, right midfield downwind runway 23. See what they were looking for. And that's fine. Skyhawk 72675, number two, runway two tree, traffic left downwind, runway two tree. There you go. And Skyhawk 72675, number two for runway two three, looking for the traffic on downwind. It's not going to like that. Yeah. That's all right. Your response was good. Let's see. Listen and respond to ATC instructions. Contact Columbia Tower to report traffic in sight. Ready? Yep. Tower Skyhawk 72675 was the uh, traffic on downwind in sight. Skyhawk 72675, number one, runway two tree, clear to land. Clear to land, runway two three, Skyhawk 72675. It wants probably number one, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I like Which, your response, fine. Yeah. Listen to ATC. Skyhawk 72675, turn right at Bravo Tree. Contact ground on 121.9er. Here we go. Yep. Right Bravo 3, ground 121.9er, Skyhawk 72675. Bravo tree. Okay, the rest of it was good. Columbia ground, taxi FBO ramp. Ground, Skyhawk 72675, clear at Bravo 3, request taxi to FBO ramp. Skyhawk 72675, Columbia Ground, taxi to FBO ramp via Bravo, Foxtrot, cross runway 11, Alpha. Got that? Yep. Skyhawk 72675, Bravo, Foxtrot, cross runway 11 on Foxtrot, Alpha into the ramp, Skyhawk 72675. Okay, nice job, Jeff. Good little demo. All right, let's see. I'm gonna stop the demo portion of this now. And we will
Try my next screen share again. That's what does this stuff cost on the pricing options? And you can see that uh, they've got monthly, six month and annual pricing. Um, and obviously you get a better deal the longer you subscribe. Uh, I think uh, for, for uh, primary students, uh, something like a six month subscription, I would think would be sufficient. I don't know why you would want or need longer than that. And then for coming back in, you could do maybe a monthly subscription um, the IFR, a little more expensive, and then you can get the combo VFR and IFR. One of the things that's shown here, and I haven't really looked into it, is our club as a flight school kind of institution can get uh, some kind of club rates. I'm not sure what that might be or what the commitment might be. Uh, one of the things they suggested was uh, if you go that route, then they can customize your uh, airport database a little bit so possibly we could get uh, Charlotte and Greensboro and and Raleigh and some other airports in there so it, if there is any interest in this uh, if somebody will contact me and let me know I'll be glad to follow up but otherwise um, those are the monthly subscription rates Any questions? Yeah, Heinz, how, uh, have you traversed all the scenarios yourself? And I have not traversed all the scenarios. Did you, do you have a feeling for like, if you wanted to do that? In other words, how long would it take you to go through the whole thing? And, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess you get practice by, you know, repeating and so forth, but I just kind of curious about how many scenarios they kind of have. I, I, I don't know, Todd, there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, I, I imagine it's a, a couple of weeks probably to wade through all that, right. assuming you're not doing that 24-7. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? So at the beginning of this, we had a trivia question of a famous aviation graduate for, from Purdue University, and that's uh, Neil Armstrong. And it turns out that Purdue University has graduated uh, a number of astronauts. So uh, there, it's a noteworthy uh, institution. So my last trivia question is, which colleges have produced the most astronauts? Who wants to take this? Joe, you probably know the answer, so you're not allowed to answer. Uh, somebody guess. It's not North Carolina State. State's got one, although she's famous and did great stuff and holds uh, space flight duration records. But just in terms of numbers. Oh, look at that. Oh, of course. And Purdue is uh, number four with 15 astronauts. All right, folks, that concludes my presentation for tonight. Thanks for, uh, for sitting around and uh, for my uh, guinea pigs going through these things. Nice job, well done. You obviously know your way around the radios and hopefully people will find this uh, recording interesting if they wanna to jump into uh, uh, plain English. You know, plain English uh, doesn't really require you to do anything with a flight instructor. I, I think it'd be very little value add having a flight instructor do this with you. You just get on your iPhone or your tablet and you start uh, running through them. And repetition is a powerful reinforcement uh, on, these, uh, on these communication patterns that make it easier in the air when you have to deal with them. If there are no more questions, thanks everybody for joining. Thank you, Hans.